Welcome to the next video in our set, which is going to be chapter 8 in the CCNA2 course. Uh, this chapter is going to be on DHCP. Uh, we're going to configure both DHCP for V6, IPv6 and IPv4, okay, and troubleshoot them a little bit. Uh, IPv6 being the more complicated of the two. If you remember, DHCP, of course, is Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol which is basically basically going to give out IP addresses to your clients dynamically. So we're going to set up a router to do that as a DHCP server, and then you can see there's a short section on how to set up a router as a DHCP client if you have a reason to do that. So we'll get into both items. Moving right along. All right, so we start off with DHCP v4. We've gone over what DHCP is before, but it does, again, uh, give out information, uh, network information like your IP address, your default gateway, um, DNS uh, address, things of that nature to your client devices automatically, so you don't have to set them up yourself. Uh, therefore, they are a time-saving tool for network administrators. Uh, so it dynamically assigns or leases those IPv4 addresses from a pool of addresses that you specify as the network administrator. You could have a dedicated DHCP server, okay, or you could have a router configured to be uh, provide DHCP services, uh, which would typically be done in a smaller location, a small branch or small office, home office, uh, something of that nature. Um, rather than you wouldn't use a router for a, a larger network. All right, but what we'll be doing, since we are uh, technically in CCNA 1 and 2 working with smaller networks, we are going to use a router to provide DHCP services. Um, we configure uh, DHCP services that leases do expire, uh, typically expire anywhere from 24 hours to a week. Um, and if uh, the client still needs the address, it'll be, it will ask for an address again and, all, um, and most of the time be given that exact same address that it had before. Um, you can set up the time to be a little shorter for certain stations. Maybe you have a classroom and you want students to be able to bring in their devices and use DHCP and you want that lease time to expire in maybe three hours because students are in and out all the time. Uh, then you could on the teacher's computers, maybe it would be more appropriate to have that lease time expire in 24 hours or a week since, uh, since well, they're going to be there longer. Um, they're not in and out of the classroom. They have a set workstation. So that lease time can vary, and you will set that up um, as needed. And we just have a basic example of a DHCP serving client down here. So here we have the DC DHCP process, how your client is going to get its IP address through DHCP. Um, so in this scenario, we'll say the, the client boots up, has no IP address, it's set to use DHCP to obtain its IP address. It's going to send a broadcast out with its MAC address as the source uh, MAC address because it has no IP address and that's how the server is going to know how to respond to um, its its discover um, message okay so it sends this broadcast out there could be multiple servers on the network um, if there are then all of them potentially will respond um, and uh, some server is going to receive that message uh, use the source MAC address to send a unicast back to the client okay so it uses that MAC address sends it back says here is an address I have to offer Okay, uh, then the client is going to send out a request for that offered IP address. Okay, um, that request is also broadcast. One, to of course let the server know that it would like to use that IP address, and two, to let other servers know that had offered IP addresses that it's declining those addresses. Okay, um, so that's why this is a broadcast. Uh, and if there are multiple servers on a network, the ones that um, sent out an offer and that offer is not being used, they'll know it's not being used because this request will contain a certain IP address request. Okay. So a couple things are going to happen when this uh, request comes to the DHCP server that offered the address. It is going to ping the IP address it offered just to make sure that nothing uh, there's no reply 
and that that IP address is still out there or I should say uh, available to use okay then it's going to create an ARP entry for the client over here and send this DCP ACK back to the client uh, it's not DCP, uh, DHCP ACK <laughs> back to the client uh, upon receiving that DHCP acknowledgement, it's going to configure that information and do one more kind of uh, check to make sure it'll go ahead and uh, send out an ARP to the IP address it's going to use just to make sure uh, there's no reply. And if there's no reply, then it knows that, well, the IP address is unique and it can use it uh, safely. Okay, so a couple things happening down here. Um, Again, the, DA, the server would ping to make sure the address is still available, send out that acknowledgement. The client gets it, uh, sets up its configuration, and does an ARP with that IP address attached to it as well uh, to make sure that no other device has it on the network. So there's two kind of uh, safety checks that happen down here. Okay, And that is your process. Once you have an IP address, you are going to need to renew that lease every once in a while. So we talked about how the DHCP, or the, the IP, I should say, the IP address is on a lease from the DHCP server and it will expire. So to renew the address, the client's going to send out a unicast message uh, to request to, oh, so it's just a DHCP request message like we saw before to renew that IP address. And then hopefully get a DHCP acknowledgement back from the server. This is a unicast, okay, because so, it knows what a DHCP server is. It'll send it right over um, and expect an acknowledgement back. If it does not get that acknowledgement back, then it will take a second step and send out a broadcast uh, hoping to hit another DHCP server to renew that IP address. So that's what will happen in case you don't get that acknowledgement back from the original DHCP server. Okay, starts off as a unicast. If everything goes well, it just stays that way. If there's no response, it'll send a DHCP request as a broadcast. And if you want to know about this message format, you can read all about it, but it's not a test, uh, test slide. Uh, it's just showing the, the format of the message. So you don't need to know this stuff. Uh, what you do need to know, what is important, is then when you send that uh, discover message we talked about how it's a broadcast and of course broadcasts have a destination MAC of FFFFFF uh, destination IP 255.255.255.255 uh, and the source MAC is what the DHCP server is going to use to respond so that MAC is the MAC address of the client okay you can see that the destination MAC address is the, the MAC address of, uh, of the client. And this DHCP offer that you see on this slide, that's what you're seeing here, is going to contain your IP address that's being offered, the subnet mask, the lease duration, um, basically all the network information that you need. Okay, um, Knowing all the other fields, really not necessary. Uh, but know what it contains know what it contains so again don't need to worry about all these abbreviations and whatnot down here just know in general what the message contains or the messages contain alright this is probably well it is your most important slide for DHCP v4 it has all the commands that you will need in it okay so let's take a look at them so here we go. Um, so first things first. What you're going to do it from global config is determine whether or not there are any IP addresses that you want to exclude from your DHCP pool. If you've configured DHCP on a consumer router before, you and if you were in, I think A plus with me or in any A plus class, you would have configured that and you could configure a range of IP addresses uh, to use for your DHCP pool. So you could say I want to use addresses uh, 50 through 150. Okay, uh, 192.68.1, 192.168.2, 192.168.3, 192.168.4, 192.168.5, 192.168.6, 192.168.7, 192.168.8, 192.168.9, 192.168.10, 192.168.11, 192.168.12, 192.168.
50 through 192, 168, 150, and that would be fine. But that's not how it's going to work on a commercial router. Okay, you can't just pick and choose uh, the ranges you want. You have to share an entire network's worth of IP addresses. Okay, so here's what you have to do instead. Our intention is going to be to share this 192.168.10.0 network. That's a the subnet mask of yada yada here. Um, our normal subnet mask slash 24. All right. That's all we can do. We can only share this whole entire network. We can't just say we want to share 50 through 150 in that network. But um, on the other hand, because we can't do that, we can exclude certain IP addresses. Okay, um, so we'd want to do that in order to, well, set up static IPs for certain devices. Uh, you're going to have a static IP address for maybe printers, uh, routers, switches, um, almost anything but a client. So you can have a static IP address. You could have various reasons for having ne the need for static IPs. Uh, you don't want static IPs to be given out through DHCP. Okay. Um, even if you do have a static IP, maybe that device is not connected to your network all the time. Maybe you have a printer that you need to turn off to change the ink in, or you're um, taking a switch offline for some reason or another. If you had those addresses available through DHCP, if that device is no longer there, there's a chance that DHCP can give out its IP address, you bring it back online, and there's an IP conflict. So you might have some IP addresses you need to exclude. So to do that, we go IP DHCP excluded address. And if you want a range, this would do uh, 192.168.10.1 through 192.168.10.9. OK, so we just, we're saying we want to reserve 1 through 9 for whatever devices, switches, printers, um, router, whatever. OK. Uh, whatever your needs are, it doesn't need to be a specific need, of course. Um, and they've taken uh, the 254 address here and excluded it as well. Um, why? Because uh, Windows people and I believe Linux people use the 254 address for the router. So we talked about how typically you'll use one or the other, the first available address or last available address for a router depending on how you've learned it. Um, so that's why they picked out 254 here. Okay. Um, so again, this would be a range 1 through 9, and then we just have a second entry down here for 254. All right. <clears throat> so um, once you've excluded your IP addresses, we're going to create the DHCP pool that you want to hand out addresses from. Um, but by using IP DHCP pool and then just the name of the pool, um, LAN pool one is what they've called it down here. Maybe LAN LAN one pool would be better. However, you want to name it as long as it's uh, got no spaces, you're good. You're going to determine the network that you want to hand out addresses from. So you're going to type network, some network, 192.168.10.0 is what we've chosen here with the subnet mask for that network. Uh, so anywhere from 1 to 254 would be used in the 192.168.10.0 network, excluding the addresses we already put a, uh, wrote down up here. Okay, so it would really be 10 through 253 because we've excluded the rest. That's all you need to do. And in fact, as soon as you type this in, it's going to go ahead and start giving out addresses. Okay. Um, you also want to do the default router command, though. Um, that's going to give the default gateway to your devices as well. So just think of default router as it is default gateway. It is default gateway. That's the information that you're giving to your clients. Okay. Um, these are optional. If you want to give the address of the DNS server. Uh, if you want to give the domain name out through DHCP, you can also change the lease time down here. Um, if you want the lease to be infinite, a certain amount of days, hours, minutes, you can type in lease and then uh, give that command as well. So those are all optional. Uh, you want to go down to this default router.
command um, and then you can optionally type in the others okay uh, if you want to disable DHCP you've got the command no service DHCP if after you do your no service DHCP you want to bring back up DHCP you can type in service DHCP so there's that option as well alright um, you've got commands to verify DHCP you can do your show running config uh, that will show you the DHCP commands that you have entered so you'll be able to see your DHCP pool and everything you set up for that um, you've got your show IP DHCP binding that is going to show you the DHCP addresses that you have handed out as the DHCP server okay um, then you've got show the IP DHCP server statistics which is going to show you the DHCP messages that have been sent back and forth to your router um, the number of messages um, that have been sent out and received so um, those are three commands that can come in handy uh, when verifying DHCP uh, you can also um, verify on the PC using your IP config space slash all we've done that plenty of times so you should be pretty familiar with that command and we have a DHCP problem that we can deal with here um, the problem of DHCP being set up on a router that is not directly connected to your network okay let's say that DHCP is set up on R3 and PC1 is looking for an IP address it sends out that DHCP discover as a broadcast so it's only going to be within its own network all right it'll hit R1 but it won't go any further than R1 so what we need to do is set up R1 as a relay to relay to relay that DHCP request over to the appropriate device server router whatever is giving out DHCP so we've got a command for that that we'll see on the next slide which is the IP helper address command so here we are as you're going to put in this helper address um, as the address of your DHCP server or the nearest interface on the router that is acting as your DHCP server I'm gonna back up here because I think I missed something and I did um, your server is down here okay in this scenario you got PC1 and the server is separated from PC1 by a router okay so you, on the router you're going to configure this IP helper address with the address of the server to help PC1 contact the server basically relaying that DHCP request through the router to another network okay so that's what it's going to do the router is going to act as a relay to the DHCP server over here and again notice the IP address the helper address the same thing okay configured on interface G00 so that's all it is um, that'll enable your router to essentially just forward or relay that, I, uh, that DHCP discover uh, on over to the DHCP server if for some reason you need to set up your router for DHCP to get its information automatically which can happen if your router is directly connected to your ISP uh, all you have to do is go to that interface type in IP address DHCP no shutdown to bring it up uh, and that's it okay so if you do a show IP interface on that interface you'll be able to see that the address is being determined by DHCP down here to confirm that DHCP is active on that interface okay and this is just showing you on a consumer router um, for a small office or home office uh, the DHCP is typically set up on a wireless router that is connected to either a cable modem or fiber modem D DSL modem um, and it will receive its IP address automatically okay so that's typically set up and you can tell this is uh, somewhat of a typical graphical user interface for your wireless router setup basic setup and you find it there okay so not much to see here 
So a few troubleshooting tasks. Um, we got two troubleshooting tasks. One, resolve uh, address conflicts. If you have two devices with the same IP address, it is going to create a IP address conflict. So that can happen if a lease expires and uh, your device is powered down. Maybe your device powers up and the DHCP server doesn't react in time, so the device uses the last good IP address that it has um, in its database. There, And if that IP address has been given out to some other device, you're going to have a conflict because now you've got two devices with the same IP address. Okay, Or maybe someone goes and tries to set up a static IP for a device that already has a DHCP um, attained address with the same IP address. Okay, So if you have that conflict, there is a command called show IP DHCP conflict uh, that will show you your conflicting IP addresses and then you can deal with them from there. Um, if there is a conflicting IP address, it will be removed from your DHCP pool until you resolve the conflict. Um, verifying physical connectivity, that's, I mean, well, verify physical connectivity. Make sure your interfaces are up on your router. Okay. If a device that's set up for a DHCP isn't working, you might want to try a static IP address and see if that works to uh, eliminate the chance that um, it's something other than uh, DHCP that is the issue. Okay. Uh, verify switch port configuration. For instance, uh, if you have problems with a uh, switch port that's trunking wrong or set up in the wrong mode access versus trunk that can cause DHCP to fail um, so you want to make sure your switch port configuration is correct if you're not on the same subnet or VLAN as the DHCP server in uh, task 5 then um, well, you might want to move to the same subnet or DHCP server and test it out and if that works, you could have a problem with your your relay that you set up. You saw that IP uh, DHCP helper address. Um, if that's not set up correctly and you're on a different network, then you're going to have issues. Okay, so those are our troubleshooting tasks here as we move on. So if you want to verify that the helper address is up and running and has the, the correct IP helper address, then you can go to that interface that the helper address is configured on and it should show you that IP helper address. Okay, um, so there's that and we've got debugging and this is going to be a little different to see since we haven't done extended access list we only did standard in the last uh, chapter. Last chapter? Yes, the last chapter. Um, this is going to look strange because we didn't configure anything like this but basically what this is saying is you want to permit uh, for access list 100 you're permitting any IP address um, destined for the port port 67 and 68 uh, which are your DHCP ports okay um, so this access list basically says permit any traffic for DHCP if you don't if you just create the access list Okay, you don't apply it to an interface, don't, don't make it an access group, uh, any interface in an access group, then it's not going to actually um, be in effect, but you can, you can debug based on that access list. So what they've done here is set this up to permit any DHCP traffic, then we've decided to debug IP packet 100, which is basically based on access list 100, Access list 100 only permits DHCP traffic, so all you'll see in this debug is DHCP traffic. So you'll be able to see DHCP statistics only based on this access list that you've created up here, which is kind of a cool concept, um, kind of a, a way to use access lists in a different way. All right, so again, uh, you're using this access list to narrow things down to just DHCP traffic down here, and you can see your statistics. Uh, for DHCP traffic. So you don't need to be able to read this entire thing, but you can see that, well, a packet was re received from source with the 0000, 
uh, destination 255, 255, 255, 255. So that's going to be a DHCP discover most likely because you've got a source IP address of that. That's the, what you see in a DHCP discovery uh, message and then destination, which is a broadcast. Okay. Um, you also have de debug IP DHCP server events. This command that you can use. Um, you can see your leases expiring, your assigned addresses, uh, addresses that are returned to the DHCP pool if you enter that command. So those will be useful in some situations as well. I don't think we really need to use them in our labs, but they're good to know, well, for testing purposes, um, and they might be useful in real life at some point. Okay. All right, we're going to continue on with uh, DHCP v6, which is going to be a bit more complicated than DHCP v4 because we have a couple different ways that you can get your IP address, uh, your default gateway, and other information with the DHCP v6 or with IP v6 in general, I should say. You might remember back a couple chapters ago we talked about Slack, which was stateless auto address configuration or a stateless address auto configuration, um, which in which the router can give clients in the network all their information. There's also Slack with DHCP and full DHCP, where or Slack isn't used at all, um, otherwise called stateful DHCP. Okay, so we have three different techniques um, full Slack, Slack with DHCP, and stateful. DHCP, which is you get basically all your information from the DHCP server. So what we're looking at right here is you have the same type of thing going on that we did in DHCP B4. Um, you've got your router solicitation here. Um, you've got your router advertisement that comes back just like we had a discover um, and a advertise, I believe it was. No, it wasn't an advertise because this is advertise. It was uh, 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 offer DHCP offer that the router would send back in DHCP v4. So same type of thing. Uh, if you remember, we don't have broadcasts in IPv6, so this would be a multicast to all routers, uh, which is directed to the FF02 colon colon one multicast address. Um, so whichever router was set up for Slack would respond to that in this situation. So if we're just going to use Slack without any DHCP or or we're not going to use stateful DHCP, all we've got to do uh, to get the router to start advertising um, the prefix, prefix length and everything else is turn on IPv6 unicast routing. That just basically enables IPv6 on the router. Uh, then it can start responding to router solicitations from hosts. So you're going to, as a client, send out your router solicitation uh, to an all routers multicast address, as we discussed in the previous slide. Uh, then uh, your IPv6 router is going to go ahead and respond with a router advertisement. I don't know if I said router solicitation up here, but that's what that is. Um, router advertisement will be sent back and it will contain the prefix, prefix length, so on and so forth. The computer is going to get that and it's going to configure its own IP address using that prefix and prefix. During this process it's the the client will use either EUI64 uh, which is a process that involves the MAC address to create its interface ID or generate its interface ID uh, randomly. So those are the two things that will happen. Um, as that's happening as well, it will set up the link local address of the router as its default gateway. So all that's going to happen as the PC creates its address. Uh, once the address is created, um, the since there is no server, no DHCP server keeping track of addresses, it's up to basically your clients to make sure there's no duplication or duplicate address out there on the network. Uh, so what it's going to do is send out a all nodes multicast, um, an all nodes multicast that contains the last 24 bits of its interface ID. 
and see if there's any re response. If there is not a response, then the client is all but guaranteed that its address is unique on the network. Um, if there is a response, then well, it means that there is a duplicate and uh, we need to choose a different interface ID. So that's what duplicate address detection is. Again, that's because we don't have a DHCP server keeping track of everything. Uh, we need to make sure there's no duplicate addresses on our own. So as we discussed before, there are three different techniques to obtain your IP address, or I guess I should refer to it as the global unicast address that you're getting uh, from either Slack or DHCP or a combination of both. So your router solicitation, uh, that advertisement that's sent back is going to tell you um, the contents of that advertisement and going to tell you what you're supposed to use. Are you just supposed to use the router advertisement? Are you supposed to use the router advertisements and the server or just use the server? Uh, there are flags, um, there's a M flag and an O flag that are set up in that message to let the client know what it's supposed to use as we configure uh, DHCP v6 on our router I'll discuss what those M and O flags mean or maybe I will in the next slide as it turns out let's see I guess we will talk about those flags now um, these are th commands that you'll set up um, that you'll see later on in the slideshow that will allow you to manage these flags so you have an M flag, which basically stands for managed. In fact, that's exactly what it stands for. And an O flag that stands for other. When you're using normal Slack with no DHCP involved, um, and again, you just enable that by enabling IPv6 on your router. Um, both of those are set to zero. And uh, you're going to use Slack, and your PC is going to get all its information from R1. Okay? Um, so we've discussed that before in this chapter and in previous chapters. There normal old router solicitation uh, router advertisement okay you have the option also for stateless DHCP v6 and um, we saw this a couple chapters back as well this is going to allow you to get some information well most of your information anyway from the router but you're also going to need to contact the DHCP server for things such as DNS addresses and other information. Hence, the other flag needs to be on or set to 1 here. Um, you don't actually place the 1 value. That's the, the value that the flag is given in the message. Um, what we do on the router is IPv6 and the other config flag, and that sets the flag for O to 1 which means your PC is going to send out its router solicitation. The message that the router sends back is going to contain that O flag at 1, letting the PC know, okay, you're going to get your uh, prefix and your prefix length um, from, the, from R1. You're going to be able to create your global unicast address from that. Uh, your default gateway is this link local address. But things like... DNS addresses are going to be obtained from the DHCP v6 server. So you're going to have to send uh, a message back over to the DHCP server to figure out that information. So again, that is a O flag set to 1, and how you're going to do that is through this IPv6 ND other config flag. Okay, and we move on. So this stateful situation that we have is most similar to DHCP v4 in that all of the information is obtained from the DHCP v6 server. Uh, when you send your message from your PC to R1, then it's going to send back a router advertisement with an M flag, meaning you're going to need to get all of your information from the DHCP server. Okay, and how you configure that? you see up here excuse me um, right up here you see IPv6 ND manage config flag that's gonna set the M flag to 1 uh, and your PC is going to need to go and obtain its information from the DHCP v6 server okay 
Um, the DHCP v6 server is going to keep a track of all the addresses and maintain them just like a DHCP v4 server would. And really this is the only situation where the DHCP v6 server is aware of all of your global unicast or IP addresses. In the previous situation, you were still creating your own interface ID and whatnot because all you were getting from the server was DNS. Now since you're getting everything from the server, the server is fully aware of the address addresses that in, have been given out on the network. So um, the entire database is maintained in the server, which makes this kind of unique and more similar to IP v4 or DHCP v4. And here's how we how the communication goes once you get that router advertisement back from R1 and it says either get your DNS information and other information from the server or get everything from the server. Uh, your client is going to send a um, solicit, a multicast solicit message to all DHCP v6 servers um, with a special address FF, uh, I forget exactly, I think it ends with 1-2. Um, FFO2 colon colon 1 colon colon 2 if I'm not mistaken. Um, I have to check that. I can check it right now as a matter of fact. Let's see. Yep. FF02 colon colon 1 uh, colon colon 2. So um, it's going to send it to that multicast address for all DHCP v6 servers and it's going to get a reply back from well all servers on the network. Uh, because that is a link local address, it doesn't leave the network, much like our DHCP v4 uh, request does not leave the network. Remember, we had to use a helper address in DHCP v4 uh, to get a DHCP request outside the network. Uh, we're going to have to do something similar in IPv6. Anyhow, um, well, after you send out that solicit, you're going to get an advertise, basically the servers saying that they are there okay um, you're going to send a unicast message back to the server you want information from and depending on whether you're looking for just other information um, or everything you're going to send a request or an information request a request is asking for everything your IP v6 global unicast address as well as DNS information and everything else uh, your information request is just for DNS information and other information. So depending on what you send out, you are going to get a reply back with that information that you had requested from the DHCP v6 server. Okay, here we have a pretty important slide. This is going to show you how to configure stateless DHCP v6. Uh, so First of all, we turn on IPv6 unicast routing, which allows you to send router advertisement messages with ICMP v6. So basically allows you to send, again, those router advertisement messages. Then you're going to create a DHCP pool um, and name it whatever you want to name it. So again, IPv6, DHCP pool, some name, okay? Whatever name you want it to be. It doesn't have to be IPv6 dash stateless. Uh, it can be whatever. Okay. We don't need to define a IPv6 address um, of any sort because since this is stateless DHCP the devices are all already going to have calculated their global unicast or IPv6 address using the router advertisement. Okay, It, it contains the prefix and the prefix length needed to create their own uh, global unicast address. Also use the uh, source link local address to figure out what the default gateway is for our, which is R1. Alright, all we're setting up is the other information that it's going to get from us as the from the router as the DHCP server. So you're going to set up the DNS server information um, that the device is going to get from R1. Okay, um, also the domain name it will get the client will get from R1 okay so that's all we're doing uh, setting this up as a DHCP v6 server that will respond with other information like DNS server and domain domain name okay um, so there's that 
uh, to enable that on an interface you're just going to go to the interface um, you're going to give it an IPv6 address all right um, go ahead and and say IPv6 DHCP server and then the whatever name you gave that DHCP pool all right and on that interface on the router so that the clients know which are attached to that interface uh, to look for other information from the DHCP server not to just configure everything itself through normal slack you type in IPv6 ND other config flag remember that's the command that sets that O flag to 1 um, and will allow um, the client to know that okay it's supposed to get other information from the DHCP server all right, so that's the whole set of commands to set up stateless, stateless DHCP. Okay, so you gave it a full name, uh, add in the other information you want to share, and you're done. Okay, go to the interface that you want to set up that stateless DHCP on, uh, give it an AIP address, uh, set up the DHCP server as whatever name you gave the pool up there, and change the flag. All right, so that's what we have for stateless DHCP. Um, if you want to set up a router as a date stateless DHCP client, uh, you're going to go to the interface, go to IPv6 enable, and IPv6 address auto config. Okay, and that will set it up as a stateless DHCP client. Um, again, this would if you want to set up a router as a as a client, that's not all that common, but here are the commands you'd use to do so. All right. And to verify stateless DHCP, you've got show IPv6 DHCP pool. You can see uh, the pool you created, um, what information is there, how many active clients you've got, um, which we really won't see because we don't have an IP address that we're giving out. So. Um, I believe with stateless it'll always be zero if I'm not mistaken. And yes, that is zero because there is no database being uh, kept by the router because it is a stateless DHCP, which means that it doesn't know. It doesn't know the active clients out there. Okay. Um, and backing up one slide real quick, this IPv6 address autoconfig is just for Slack in general, um, not necessarily stateless DHCP it just configures it for slack and based on the router advertisement that your device gets back then it will know whether or not to look for extra information on your DHCP server um here we are configuring uh, stateful DHCP v6 which isn't really too much different than stateless there's just a couple extra things or change things about it uh, you can see we still gotta enable unicast routing uh, we're still going to create some pool and the name here you don't have to have stateful in the name it's just whatever name you want what is different about it is you're going to type in the address prefix uh, for the pool of addresses you want to use so in this one we want to use 2001 DB8 uh, cafe 0001 um, and that's going to be the prefix or range of IPv6 addresses that are going to be advertised through this uh, DHCP server that we're setting up. Okay, you're also going to set up a lease lifetime of however long you want it to be. If you want it to be infinite, then well, you've got a lifetime of infinite. You've got a ton of addresses, which is why you might wish just go with infinite um, rather than setting up a specific lease time. Uh, I don't even know what the number is, but the number is. Uh, so big that you won't be able to uh, get that many hosts on it if you have thousands and thousands of devices in your network. So um, the least time, eh, not the most important thing in IPv6, but uh, you can set up a valid and preferred least time if you don't want to do infinite here. Okay. So again, this is the uh, pool of addresses that will be given out from this server. Uh, you got a least time here which is going to be lifetime infinite in this example 
Uh, same things for DNS server. You're going to give out that information. You're going to give out domain name just like we did in state lists. Um, and that's about it. The only change was the address prefix and everything. So everything else is the same as state lists. Uh, when you actually go in to configure it on this interface, G01, then we, well, give G01 an IP address. Okay. Um, we got IPv6 GHCP server, IPv6 stateful. All right, um, still everything's the same, but this managed config flag for state lists. We did IPv6 and the other config flag in state full. We are doing manage config flag, which will set your M flag rather than O to one. Um, and it'll tell the client that it needs to get everything from the DHCP server. Okay. So not too different, um, different flag. You got to set up a network that you want to give out ad uh, addresses from, but other than that, pretty similar, pretty similar to stateless. Uh, if you want to configure your router as a stateful DHCP client, uh, you've got IPv6 address DHCP rather than I believe it was auto config in uh, the previous example. So if you want to do DHCP client on your router here are your commands here we have some verification of stateful DHCP v6 um, if you do this show IPv6 DHCP pool um, you can see the prefix that's being used you can see how many active clients um, you've got logs because now that you have a stateful DHCP server you will have um, that server keeping track of addresses so you can see the clients there um, on the router that we've set up as a DHCP server you can also see uh, the client's link local address and the I, I, the uh, global unicast address that's been given out through DHCP uh, you can also see the preferred lifetime uh, valid lifetime uh, both set for infinity so um, you've got that there um, if we go to the interface that was set up through DHCP, you can see its global unicast address there. Um, you can also see that the default router or default gateway um, is the link local address of the router. And again, they, it did not obtain that through DHCP. Um, it took that from the router advertisement message that was sent back from the router. Just use the the source um, source uh, link local address on the router advertisement message. So that's how it learns the default router. It doesn't learn it through DHCP. Um, it learns it through that ad router advertisement message. In uh, DHCP v6, we had a IP helper address that would uh, help devices that aren't on the same network as the DHCP server send messages to that DHCP server. So we need to be able to do the same thing in DHCP v6. So let's see here. We've got whoops, whoops, and whoops. Uh, we've got R1 that we're setting up as a helper, a relay agent, I should say, relay agent in DHCP v6. So R1 is going to be the relay agent. You've got PC1 down here that needs, we'll say needs a IP address. If it was going to send a router solicitation, it wouldn't get past R1, typically. Um, well, it would go to R1, and R1 would say, you need to get all your information from the DHCP server, and that message wouldn't get past R1. Okay. Um, to enable PC1 to contact the DHCP v6 server, uh, we're going to go into the interface connected to PC1 here, and write in IPv6 DHCP relay destination then the global unicast address of the DHCP server. Okay, um, and that's going to set up, well, a relay, um, and you'll be able to get your DHCP information through this G00 link, uh, just like you could in IPv4. If you want to confirm that, you can do a show IPv6 DHCP interface, blah, blah, it'll show you that it has a relay destination in there and is in relay mode. Okay, um, so again, this is the, in spirit, the same thing we did in IPv4. Okay, 
Um, and just like an IPv4 as well, we have some troubleshooting steps to take. So these troubleshooting tasks are pretty much the same as, well, almost the same as uh, IPv4. You've got some address conflicts that can uh, occur. Uh, and in IPv4, we had show IP DHCP conflict that would allow you to see those. In IPv6, you have show IPv6 uh, DHCP conflict that will allow you to uh, see any conflicting IP addresses, IPv6 addresses. Um, you're going to verify allocation method, whether you're using stateful, DHCP, stateless, um, or slack. Uh, you can go into a, do a show IPv6 interface to confirm that on an interface. Um, you can test with static IPv6 addresses to make sure it's, it's not a DHCP, DHCP issue that's causing you problems. Um, it might be just a network issue if you if you even a static address doesn't work. Uh, verifying switch port configuration again is you got trunks set up incorrectly and things of that nature. Um, if your relay agent isn't working correctly, you might want to try testing from the same subnet or VLAN because the relay agent may not be uh, relaying your request to the DHCP server. So those are all tasks that can come up. Um, Got a couple more things we can do. Um, make sure your flags are set up correctly, whether you're using stateful or stateless. Uh, stateful, you'd be using managed. Uh, stateless, you'd be using other. You can see that here and there. Hopefully my mouse is still showing up because I noticed that it did disappear a little earlier um, in the presentation. So I'm hoping it's there still in the video. I can't tell until it's over. Um, and you can debug uh, I, uh, DHCP or debug IPv6 DHCP. D and you can see the um, DHCP v6 messages being sent back and forth. You see, you see the uh, a solicit from a certain link local address. Uh, we're using pool uh, IPv6 stateful, so uh, there are creating binding for that link local address in from the pool. So you're going to see those uh, DHCP v6 messages um, in a debug IPv6 DHCP detail if you need to. Okay. Um, so those are some methods for troubleshooting DHCP v6. And I think we, we are done with DHCP. So we'll be creating in the labs uh, DHCP v4 uh, servers, DHCP v6 in the various states we can, um, and that's about it. Okay, so really it's DHCP v4, DHCP v6 that we've gone through in this chapter. It's really not the worst thing in the world. DHCP v6, definitely the more complicated one, um, but that's about it. We'll be picking up chapter 9, Network Address Translation, then we're almost done. Two more chapters left, so that concludes chapter, ten, uh, chapter 8.